Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. I'm your host, Jill Simons, and I'm so excited to grow in the radical art of standing in what God says about you with you today. The show is a place where we pour into the sense of who God is, who we are, and how we can live more in the freedom that he has for us every single day. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. As always, I'm your host, Jill Simons, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. I am going to be talking with you today about a topic that if you had told me two years ago was going to be a topic of a podcast I was going to do, I would have been like, wait, what? Because nothing could be further from my lifelong default mindset than the topic of today's episode, and that is this really simple idea that has just captivated my imagination and led me down this very long rabbit hole that I think has been really fruitful. And that is the idea that Sunday comes first. Simple, simple premise, basic statement of fact, Sunday is considered the first day of the week. But I want to, as I so often do, go deeper on this idea and really extend the metaphor here, even though it's not really a metaphor, but extend this idea of the fact that Sunday is the first day of the week and look at what that means for a countercultural view of rest. A lot of us are comfortable with the mindset that we start the week on Monday, work all week, maybe finish up all our work at home on Saturday and take a rest on Sunday. And this is what we see in the creation narrative. So to be fair, not like against what is in the Bible. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is not what I'm going to call dogmatic theology. It's not like required that you believe this. But if you do believe this, I think it teaches you something extremely helpful about yourself and extremely helpful about God. And that is why I think it's worth talking about, because nothing ties more deeply into what we believe about ourselves and where we differ from how God sees us in what we think about rest. Rest is something that a lot of people talk about in our society, but I think if you like really pushed people on whether or not they felt like they knew how to rest well, the majority of people would say that they don't really have a comfort level with that. They don't really know if they've rested, how to rest, kind of what that looks like in their lives. And maybe I just know people that are workaholics. Maybe that's not experience in your life. So let me know in the comments if yet you feel like that is true for your circle or for yourself. Um, maybe I just live in like a commune of workaholics. Could be. But um, that has been my experience for most of my life is that people around me are not typically great resters. And so I didn't feel like it was really modeled for me a lot how to rest well. And to the extent I think that for most of my life, I looked at I really looked down on rest. I looked at it like something that was sort of weak to need or sort of um I want to use an accurate adjective here, but sort of like disappointing if you were a person that needed to rest frequently, Um, like that was just not living up to your potential. I think that that's the most accurate statement I can make is that if you were resting on a regular basis, you were actively like leaving stuff on the table, not living up to your potential, not doing everything that you are capable of doing. And so when this idea, this simple statement was put to me that Sundays come first, that was such an like epiphany to really explore, gosh, what what would it mean in my life if I thought about living the week truly Sunday to Saturday, where I was starting the week, the first day of the week, was about resting and then I did the work. 
And this is supported throughout the lives of, you know, holy men and women throughout history. And most recent example would be Mother Teresa, where, um, you know, she was serving the poor and the dying in Calcutta along with her order. And so you would think that in a city, just endless essentially amounts of people needing care end of life care especially how she would be you know constantly inundated with the opportunity to work and so you'd think that maybe the sisters pulled really long days that they would you know go on little sleep in order to serve people as much as possible and when you look at the actual schedule of the Missionaries of Charity, which is her religious order that she had founded there in Calcutta, that is not the case. They had extended times of prayer, long extended times of prayer. They had times of repose for the sisters, scheduled times of rest, and they slept a relatively full night's sleep on a regular basis. And you look at how that how that um, community has had a sustained impact in Calcutta and around the world. And Mother Teresa shares frequently that a lot of that is due to a culture of rest. And I think that that ultimately leads back to what makes us uncomfortable about rest. What is it that we're worried about if we rest? And ultimately, I believe that we worry about resting because we think that everything depends on us. We talked a couple of weeks ago about beliefs. And if you believe that you cannot take an entire day of rest, you need to look at, or I would encourage you to look at, I don't want to tell you what to do, but I would encourage you to look at what beliefs do you have about rest? What do you think it says about you as a person if you rest? What do you think of that it says about God if you cannot rest? And I think ultimately for many of us, I'll just speak for myself, this was my own journey on rest. I absolutely believed that if you rested, you were kind of leaving things up to chance. You were not being fully in control of the situation. And that lack of control was something to be looked down upon. I really worshipped unintentionally, but in reality, I did worshipped this idea of control because I wanted to do my project in front of me as well as possible and then present it to God. I had this me to God mentality. And so it was not like I was an atheist. It's not like I was devoid of Christianity. It was simply that I had everything that flipped on where it comes from. Because what I've realized is that we actually, instead of being the creators who give to God, we are actually the receptors that receive from God. And in order to be receptive, we have to stop moving sometimes. If we are constantly in motion, we can miss what God is trying to give us on a regular basis. And so there's all kinds of times that God is trying to just hand us things And we are too busy running around that we can't take it from him. And the times when we receive from God are the times when we are resting. And that is ultimately why I have realized that it is so foundational to believe and to practice from the place of Sundays coming first. We need to be thinking about receiving from God first and then giving to him only from what we've received. Because there's no me making something new and giving it to God. Ultimately, no matter how it shakes down, everything is received from God and then given back to him down to our very lives. We can do nothing apart from him. Whether we admit that or not, it is the reality of the situation. And so how much more powerful to be intentional about creating the space to receive 
so that we can be aware of the fact that we're receiving and giving back to God. That's another place where, like we've talked about throughout the last couple of months, where when God is trying to rescue us, we don't want to be fighting him. We don't want to be trying to kick the lifeguard off of us while we're drowning. We want to allow him to move us to where we need to go. And part of that is receptivity, being receptive to the fact that he is trying to save us and he wants to give us his saving grace and his presence in our lives as well as even more concrete things. He wants to give us solutions to our problems. He wants to give us prayerful paths forward. He wants to give us inspiration for the work that it is that he's calling us to do. And what happens so much is say we are trying to create a ministry, create a project for God. And so we just run around with our heads down like, oh my gosh, what's it going to be? I can't think of an idea. I can't think of a name. I can't think of this. I'll just, you know, try harder, brainstorm more, and just kind of move into this place of like effort, 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 effort. And I have this image of God just like holding a piece of paper with everything we need. And he's following us like as we just run around all over the place. And if we ever stopped at some point and been like, what what do you have for me on this? He would just hand us the piece of paper. And it's not always that way. It's not like we just can always expect a direct download of everything that God has for us. There's been lots of times where I've gone to him in prayer and in rest and been like, what do I do? What is next? And he's just said, you know, I want you to keep coming to me. I want you to maintain this posture of receptivity, even past Sunday. I want you to stop putting in all of this effort to try and create something. And I want you to actually understand what it is to receive from me. I want you to actually understand what it means to wait on the Lord. And that's really hard for a lot of us. But I know that there is so much potential fruit in our lives. And even just like no faith background at all, like medically, this is helpful to have this rest first mentality of giving our body what it needs, giving our body the time that it needs, the sleep that it needs, the water that it needs, all these things that get pushed to the side because we're so busy. Having a first principle of starting with these things, starting our week with these things, sets us up to be receptive to those things throughout the week. How many people do you know like meal prep on Sundays where they get all of the healthy food ready for the week? And I think that that's something people can get very like legalistic about Sundays. Like, can you do this? Can you do that? Is this okay for Sunday? Is that okay for Sunday? And I think that that's ultimately super unhelpful because it, again, is like all that, like, what do I do and energy and control and like, let me make this, let me rest better than anyone has ever rested. Like that is totally out of the spirit of it. I think the best question for Sundays is what do you get to do because you are the child of God? That's how I run my Sundays, 110%. What do you get to do because you are a child of God? Sometimes that means you take a nap. Sometimes that means that you prepare healthy food for the week because that's something that you have access to as a child of God, something that you get the privilege to do. But no matter what it is, it's not from this energy of control. It's from this energy of what is this privilege that I experience because I'm a child of God. And it's obviously not exclusive. You know, this isn't the kind of privilege that cuts other people out. This is universally available privilege to anyone who steps into that child relationship with God through the sacrament of baptism. And when you look at Sundays that way, you can kind of leave behind the legalism and, you know, can I mow the lawn? Can I do this and that and the other thing? And move into a place of what do you get to do? And sometimes that means that there's things that are like, quote unquote, on the to-do list that don't get done on Sundays. I think it means that more often than not. 
where if you've had a crazy week, you are run down, you've had no time, and it's something like, I really should mow the lawn. If that is something that is like life-giving to you, then mow that lawn, go get it. But if that's something that is just another like frustrating, painful item on your to-do list after you are already at the end of your rope, don't do it on Sunday. You know, it is okay to live within your limits. It's okay to live within what bandwidth you have because I can guarantee you that if you truly rest on Sunday, then during the week when there is that window of time maybe available, then you are so much more able to do that with some level of joy and peace than if you gutted it out on Sunday. And so obviously there's mountains of individual discernment that are needed with this. And so that is why it's not helpful to have a podcast like here's the do and don't list for Sundays. There's those things on the internet list from Pinterest like do and don'ts on Sundays Maybe if that's helpful to you, then you can check them out. But I don't like things like that. I like to ask the question, what do I get to do because I am a child of God? What is it that is available to me because I'm not trying to control everything? And I think a lot of the fear of this mindset comes from the founding of, I you know, I all of you know, I'm in the United States and there's a huge culture of work ethic, the American dream, all that good stuff in the American culture. And I think there's this idea that we are going to become lazy people if we truly rest on Sunday. If we think about resting first, like that just creates slothful, lazy people that don't contribute to society and don't get anywhere in life, et cetera, et cetera. There are definitely lazy people, 100%. That's not, everybody knows that. But I'm pretty darn confident that those lazy people are not being created by intentionally resting with God on Sundays. I think that intentionally resting with God on Sundays is what empowers us to not be lazy people, to not be people that are so fully, completely tapped out that we can't even do our lives come Monday morning because we are just constantly rushing, constantly controlling. Taking this rest on Sunday allows us to live from a place of so much greater peace and so much greater joy the rest of our week that we're able to do the work that is in front of us with so much more presence of mind and so much more Uh, just healthy spiritual attachment to that work. Wanting to do it in so much as it is good and what God has put in front of us, that it's good to work, it's good for our souls, it's good for our bodies, but it's also not the essence of who we are. It's also not ultimately what gives us worth. And both things can be true at the same time. And I think, again, we've talked about this so many times on the podcast, so tempting to just like melt into an extreme to just say, oh my gosh, the, you know, you can never rest because we're worried about lazy people or everything needs to be like on your own schedule and only when you want to and just this culture of um of laziness basically the the answer again is in the middle where it is very important to rest and it's very important to do the work placed in front of you to be faithful to your vocation if you're a husband and a father you need to you need to work you need to have a job (laughs) and you need to provide for your family um and that might be true for mothers as well maybe your work is in the home that you are needing to provide for your kids on a regular basis but Rest needs to be prioritized at the family level for each of the people in it. Children need time when they're not playing sports, not doing homework, not going to school. Adults need time where they are free to do their leisure activities that they enjoy, not things that are going to stress them out even more or be mindless kind of time sucks, but things that are actually invigorating to their souls time in prayer, time in nature, time, you know, working out or nourishing their body, 
praising God for the gift to their body by doing those things. And so regardless of where you fall right now, I want to encourage you that it is possible to live this way. It is possible to take your rest first on Sundays, start the week with that day, even in your mind, and then live from that place where you know that you're going to get the rest that you need. And it is not an endless race where you are not without reprieve, without leisure, without time to be refilled. Logistically, that can be challenging, but it's worth fighting through the logistical issues. If you are you know, a family in the early stages of young kids and stuff like that, trade off. Have, you know, one person have some time on Sunday, two hours or something like that to truly um, do what it is that they enjoy doing and then switch. Do the same for the other person. Maybe one of you that's going to involve like something you can do with the kids, something out in nature, something like that. But if it doesn't, if that's not for you, don't push it. Again, this is about you as an individual, not and and relating to God, being a child of God, and not you as mom needing to be on all the time, because that's what ultimately burns us out, creates this false narrative that our control is the most important thing. It's actually our surrender and our receptivity to God that is the most important thing. And one of the most powerful ways we can nourish that is by resting first. Let me know in the comments if you already do this, if you're interested in getting started, if you think that I am insane, whatever it is, let me know in the comments because I'd love to continue this conversation about rest with you. I hope that you have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. It is always a joy to be with you. I encourage you to subscribe to our podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, whichever place you most prefer or do it all if that is what floats your boat. We would love to continue to get to know you better and grow in relationship with you. And so I encourage you to check out the links in both our show notes and our YouTube description that tell you more about where you can connect with us elsewhere. The two big things we have going on besides the podcast is our shop that is full of reminders of who you are in God, helping you to really grow in that radical art of standing in who you are and giving gifts that help others to do the same. The other big thing we have going on is the Uprising Academy. This is all of our formation um, programs, workshops, retreats. Everything is available virtually and on demand where you can sign up and continue to learn more about radically standing in what God says about you, especially if you are in a place in your life where you are not being fed the way that you long to be fed, whether it's in your community, whether it's at your church, whatever it is, there is more for you and we can absolutely walk with you into it through the Uprising Academy. All those links are in our show notes. And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to leave a review. Reviews are the number one way that we help get in front of new faces, new people that are able to be touched by the radical art of standing and what God says about us. I love you. I'm praying for you. I hope you have an amazing week.